quick disclaimer before we start. You do not need a 5-star weapon or any signature weapon for your main characters to clear the game. This is a beginner or new player friendly videos aiming for those demographics, and not for veteran players. But you're very much welcome to watch this video too. You shouldn't pull weapons especially if you're free to play. This video is my personal take on the weapons and not the absolute tier list for weapons in Genshin Impact. I'll be making a couple of videos on tier listing the weapons in Genshin Impact. Especially now it's 2023, new players or noobs can use this video as a guide whether they should or shouldn't level up, pull or invest in the weapons they accidentally or deliberately got. For this new special tier list, we're starting off with 5 star swords. Aquila Favonia one of the best sword during the early days of the game. Best used on Bennett because of its high base damage, though now there's other options. Can still be used on a physical gene or Kia. Its passive is kinda meh. Because there are many swords users that can use its high base attack and this weapon is not a limited time weapon, I'll put it in the usable tier. You can use it if there's no other options. Skyward Blade. Another weapon which is not limited, like the Aquila. It has decent base damage, and an energy recharge substat. Though the passive very much caters to main DPS units, its substat does not help in damage output for these types of units. Likely you'll equip this weapon on sub DPS like Bennett, or even Shinchio. There are other good options especially 4 star weapons with competitive stats like the Sacrificial Sword or the Favonius Sword. If you have other options then use the alternative. I'll put this on the usable tier. Summit Shaper. Very short no. There's no unit to date which can utilize the passive to its fullest. As a stat stick, there's much better options. You can utilize its passive and still can use it for its attack percent substat. But if you've pulled this, you might have made a big mistake on Primo Gem Management. Freedom Sworn. Is very usable on a lot of units mainly Kazuha. If you've pulled this weapon, might as well use it on him. Its passive increases the damage of the wielder by 10%, which is not that much at refinement 1. But when you get its stacks up, you'll increase your overall team damage output especially your main DPS. Which is a great bonus. Best used on supports. Just because of its ability to help the team's damage output, I'll put the Freedom Sworn on the S tier. Primordial Jade Cutter. S tier no doubt. 44% more crit rate makes it much easier to build your main DPS. The passive is very simple, it increases your max HP and provides bonus attack based on your max HP. Best on main DPS like Ayato or Ayaka. Overall, one of the best weapon in the game. Miss Splittery Forge. All crit based weapon does help a lot in a unit build. You can use a crit rate circlet for more consistent damage or attack for more raw output. The passive also grants elemental damage which adds more damage of all element apart from physical output. And it also stacks which increases more elemental damage according towards certain scenarios. Very good 5 star weapon for your main DPS. Solid S tier. Heron Gepa Kofutsu. Very much like the primordial Jade Cutter, but has lower crit bonus at 33% after maxing. Stat wise it's a great weapon with a 12% bonus on all elemental damage. It also provides 20% more normal attack when the required stack is achieved. Still a good sword, but when comparing it to others, S tier sword, this might be on the lower tier of S. Key of Kajnisit. No. If you don't have Nilo, just no. No unit apart from Nilo could utilize this weapon, it's the Donut Catalyst disguised as a sword. That is all the 5 star sword to date, and there will be more tier list video on the other weapons. So, click the notification bell so you wouldn't miss it. That's it for now, till next time.